As of summer of 2022, things have definitely changed from how we've done the labs in the past when everything was done online. This is lab three, and if you remember from lab two, one of the things we talked about in class is you get putty from my apps. Well, the same thing's gonna happen with MCU Expresso. You're gonna get MCU Expresso now from my apps. Now, some of the other things that you should be aware of down here, it says click on this link to download the blinking lead that can be compiled and downloaded using embed onto the Freedom K64. Now, even though it can be, this cannot be exported to MCU Express and work. It will not work. But this one here, when you say click on this link and download the blinking lead copy and export it from embed to the downloads folder, then you can import it into MCU Express and indeed it will work. And there are differences between these two. So let's take a look and see what those differences are. Now, the first link that we had, we downloaded this. And here's the code here. This is called blinking leads. And I've called it blinking lead embed because this one that says documentation not ready when you open up the embed tab here it says documentation not ready this will work compiling on embed and downloading to the board it will work quite nicely however you cannot export this program here to MCU Expresso and expect it to work now this one here is when we take a look at it it's exactly the same code as the two programs are identical except this one has a different library and this is from the second link in lab 3 and it's got the classes library this one you can export to MCU Expresso and this one will compile there and work but it will not compile on embed so the way we do this is we just say right mouse click go up here to export program and out of all these choices we have to make sure we've chosen freedom k64 up here and it says it here and we're going to go down here to mcu expresso and we're going to say export let's take a look here we're going to say show in folder and let's put it in our downloads folder here so we're going to be using that later now we're going to do two programs this way and I want to show you this one because this one is in lab three, but let's take a look at a different one here. Let's take a look at this program down here. Now this program is one that we had in lab two, and this is the one where we do typing and it centers our name. And what I've done is I've added those two function definitions here, so it's going to compile and work fine. But again, this one will work when we download it to the Freedom K64 using embed, but we can't export this to uh, MCU Expresso and expect this to be able to troubleshoot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right mouse click and I'm going to say let's clone this project and I'm going to take it from where it says copy here and I'm going to put MCUX or MCU Expresso and say OK. Now just doing that hasn't done anything really because if we take a look at here, same embed library that will not work in MCU Expresso. So what we can do is we can actually delete this library and we can go up here for the embed library that says classes and copy it and then paste it on top of this one here. Okay, so if we paste it here, we've now got it where it says classes and we can now export this one to MCU Expresso and we can do that by saying export. Again, Freedom K64, we go up here to MCU Expresso, we say export and it will be in our downloads directory when we're finished. Let's take a look here and we can say, there it is there, it's in our downloads directory. So everything's ready to go to start pulling this up into MCU Expresso. So let's see what we do next. Now uh, we are going to have to use Seneca My Apps to bring up both Putty and MC Express. So, so let's log in. And eventually it's going to validate us. And we're going to need both Putty, P U T T Y. And we're just going to click here to launch it. And then we're also going to need MCU Expresso. And there it is. And again, we're just going to click here to launch it. When we launch MCU Expresso, we want to make sure we change our workspace to our downloads directory because we're exporting from embed into the downloads directory. We want to be able to just pick it up from the downloads directory and bring it directly into MCU Expresso. So once we do that, we're just going to say launch. And when we get to the Project Explorer window, we're just going to say file. We're going to go down here to import. We're going to go to general existing projects into workspace and say next. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go from select root directory to select archive file because these are zip files that we exported. I'm going to browse here to this one here and say open. There it is and all we have to do now is say finish. Once it's here we just open this little tab here and we can double click on blinking leads.cpp and we can see that the source code will actually appear in here. And all we have to do now is just go up to this little blue bug, click on it, and everything is pretty much automatic after that. It's going to compile our code, uh, which is going to work perfectly because, again, this is not the embed version. This is the one that says classes and not documentation not ready. And then all we have to do is say, okay, it's got SimSysDAP here, so make sure your board has been plugged in before this point. 
Notice it's setting up some stuff here that wasn't there before. Zero errors, zero warnings, that's good. It's doing our target discovery and it's downloading the code to the board. And once it's finished, we can do whatever kind of troubleshooting we want to do with this code. Now, what we can do is over here, if we click on here, we can see that there's a number of different things we can do. C slash C++ is the screen that we're getting here. We can switch to our debug mode. Let's click here and say open and we can see that things changed on our screen. What we have here is the registers that are actually in our ARM board here and you can see numbers changing here and we're not going to be too worried about those numbers changing but let's do some stuff here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit run and if you do run as we can see here if you had your board running you'll actually see the red light flashing on and off. Now to stop it we're just going to hit this pause and then we're going to go back here to where it says restart. And that's going to restart our whole process again. So I want to show you a few things. Uh, if we do step over, which is this guy, you're going to find that red LED equals zero means the LED is on. Step over the wait, and as soon as you click, and right now it hasn't executed this line, therefore the red LED is still on. So if we step over that, you'll see the red LED go out, and again we're going to wait 500 milliseconds it's going to go back here. But look what happens when we say step into. If I say step into it takes us down to our hardware abstraction layer which is showing us the details of how these things are going to work. Now I've got GPI open here and since I've opened it you can see port B pin 22 is the pin where the red LED is connected physically. And if you're on different boards, it'll show you the particular pin that it is on that particular system. So 170 different boards with a red lead, it's going to take you down through different hardware abstraction layers. This is one specific to the Freedom K64. And as we go down through here, it takes us deeper and deeper into our hardware abstraction layer. And it's showing us all the things that are happening under the hood that we were not aware of before. Notice it says GPIO HAL, hardware abstraction layer. And it's writing to our output pin here. And finally, we're going to go down here and it's going to start working its way back up through the hardware abstraction layer until we finally get back to here. And so you can see that there's a lot of things happening in our hardware abstraction layer that if we just do a step over, we don't get to see. It's just showing us step over, step over, and we can see the stuff running at the top level. We're not really worried about what's going on under the hood, but these are the things that are going on under the hood and various variables and stuff will show up here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to terminate this one and that's what you have to do to get rid of it. And so if you want to get rid of it, we can right mouse click here. We can say delete and we can say delete contents on disk. There we go. And at this point what we want to do is import our other program that we had there. Before we do that, we can go back to this little thing here, open perspective. We can go back to C++ and say open. And this will give us the perspective that we had when we first came in. Import. And again, we're at uh, general existing projects in the workspace. Next. And again, what we're going to do is browse now. And we can see here is our lab 2 that we wanted to work with. So we can just click on that and say open. And say finish. And it's going to bring it in over here. When we open this up, Double click on lab to b underscore cpp. There's our code, and we're just going to hit the blue bug. We're going to say OK to Simpsys DAP. Zero errors, zero warnings. It's downloading. It's ready to go. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring up uh, Putty. Just going to make sure it's configured properly. Implicit carriage return every line feed. Force luck luck on. There we go. And so if I was to hit run, then it's going to say input your name. I'm going to say Dave Ross, and it's going to put my name up on here. So it runs exactly the same as before. I'm going to hit enter to continue. And then I'm just going to go here and I'm going to pause our program here. And I'm going to then restart our program using this. There we go. And what I'm going to do is this is putting stuff into an array. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a breakpoint on line 36 here, which is going to say it's going to change the character coming in here, which should be an enter key or character turn, to a null. So I'm going to run it to that point there. So let me try running it. Let's bring up Putty. I'm going to say Dave Ross, hit enter, and it dropped out there. Now what we want to do is we want to take a look and see what it has in this array at this point. To do that, we want to change to our debug perspective here. There we go. 
and we've got our variables listed here and if we open up name we can see that it's got d-a-v-e space r-o-s-s -S, quote backslash r which is a 13 which is a carriage return here now i'm going to put another uh, breakpoint down here uh, right before it prints and i'm just going to run to that breakpoint and when we take a look at that array again you can see that that quote backslash r is now changed to quote backslash zero which it should do because before you do a print s you have to make sure your string is null terminated so you have the ability to troubleshoot code as we showed before with the blinking lid to see the hardware abstraction layers or we can take a look at what's going on in arrays as we're doing things we have a number of things that we can troubleshoot using MCU Expresso.